Well, it's the end of 2024 and iPhone can't wait. This year has been terrible and the end can't come soon enough. And I'm sure a lot of you feel the same way. But then I ask myself, is 2025 really going to be any better? And that's a question you can ask from GRC standpoint too. According to the Wall Street Journal, the answer is probably no. According to a new report by Amazon, there has been a dramatic increase in potential cyber threats. How dramatic? Well, at the start of the year, the number of cyber threat incidents sat at about 100 billion a day, which is in and of itself a mind-boggling number. What is it today? Nearly 1 billion possible incidents and almost 10 fold jump in under 12 months. Now, I'll give you a minute to guess what's behind this meteoric rise of bad people doing bad things. You're right, it's AI. Artificial intelligence dominates almost every discussion we have today in the tech world, and it's no different to GRC. So, we invited some of the leading minds and voices in the governance, risk, and compliance sector to talk to us about it and break down what some of the biggest and best companies and leaders in the world are doing to help with it. We feature three experts in this video, Alex Sharp, Matthew Webster, and Jeffrey Wheatman. Let's start off with the most basic question. Is AI really a new risk? Jeffrey Wheatman to kick us off. I think there are a couple of things that are really important. I think number one, AI is not really new. It's been around for years. We've been looking at machine learning for a long time now. What is new is sort of the big bubble up around gen AI, generative AI. Here's the thing though, Alex Sharp agrees. Prime example, everybody has been using AI for at least a decade, doesn't really know it, right? Email, those spam filters are largely AI driven. And a little statistic, they, they filter out somewhere between 98 and 100% of um, spam or malicious actions before it ever gets to you, right? And that's AI driven, it's totally transparent here. That has changed that threat landscape in ways that the average person doesn't realize. Those are both pretty good points. AI has been around for ages. The entirety of Google search is exactly that, an AI recommendation engine. In fact, it was a summer workshop in 1956 that many consider to be the founding event of AI. Called the Dartmouth Summer Research Project on Artificial Intelligence, its four organizers, Claude Shannon, John McCarthy, Nathaniel Rochester and Marvin Minsky are considered to be the founding fathers of the field. You've probably even heard of different AI techniques before, like neural networks and deep learning. What is new, as Jeffrey Wheatman pointed out, is generative AI powered by LLMs and large language models. So, what kind of impact does this new type of AI have in organizations and, by extension, GRC? Matthew Webster. You have to take a look at the types of risk, and this is where you have to understand the business process, how is AI being used and so on. It's a balancing act. There's no one size fits all approach that you can take related to AI. If you're too strict and you don't allow anybody to use any AI, people are gonna end up using it on their own anyway because they're gonna to go to their personal computers or laptop computers and they're going to use AI regardless of what the company requirements are gonna be because it's gonna save them time. And if you're able to save you know two or three hours of time by leveraging something like AI, you have to take that into account. There's also the flip side to consider. Jeffrey Wheatman again. I was actually at an event uh, last week and I spoke to uh, a security guy and he told me that for $12, he was able to create a 30 second video of himself saying something he never said and would never say, right? So I think that what we need to be mindful of is the attackers are using it, the defenders have to use it. And I think ultimately what we need to consider is the fact that AI is really going to accelerate the bad actors. It's gonna make them able to be much, much faster. They're going to be able to iterate. They're going to be able to change things up. They're going to be able to bypass a lot of our controls. Building on what Jeffrey says and what most people in the tech space would agree with, AI is a tool with unlimited upside. Its ability to fundamentally change the way we work and operate is incredible. But with unlimited power comes unprecedented risk. Alex Sharp again. I actually teach that at the university level and, and run workshops and do a lot in that space. The, the first thing to remember is AI is a technology-induced problem without a technology solution. Most of what you deal with in the AI space is really around the data and the human dimensions, Gen AI in particular. Gen AI is not deterministic. You, you can't ask it the same question twice and get the same answer. So you look at AI and the risk, paying most attention to the data and human dimensions, because that's where you, your real issues are. And then relook at your risk register, asking yourself, how does AI change the risk and change the risk mitigation? Don't get me wrong. 
you still need to put all the basic blocking and tackling in place like you would with any other application, but you're going to be spending much more time on the human dimension. Matthew Webster concurs and continues that line of thought. There's a lot of different approaches, but I would say definitely be very careful. Be thoughtful about the different ways that uh, the different departments are going to be using it. You know, the IT department is going to be using it in a very different way than the marketing department. And those risks have to be evaluated appropriately. So if you really want to build a resiliency from an AI perspective, that's one of the ways that I would approach it is sit down and really take a look at it. Take a look at what you're doing. What are the business risks? Are people just randomly putting data into AI and they don't even know what that impact is going to be? At the end of the day, though, Jeffrey Wheatman recommends GRC and security leaders take a more pragmatic approach to the threat that AI appears to pose within organizations. I think that it is something we should certainly be concerned about, but I also think it's it's really just another risk uh, uh, to add into all of the ones that we've already been facing. I have to be honest with all the listeners out there. I still think a lot of these things are about basic blocking and tackling. You know, are we doing the basic things? Are we doing threat and vulnerability management? Are we getting patches out? Are we protecting our data? Do we know where our data is? Do we know who who has access to our data? Do we know where our hardware and software is? So again, it's, I think it's just another risk that security and risk leaders need to deal with. So in summation, 2024 was pretty rough and 2025 may be tougher. Who knows? But at the end of the day, as long as you cross your T's, dot your I's and focus on protecting and educating your people, you'll be fine. If you'd like to know more though about how the biggest companies and brightest minds are managing GRC heading in the new year, we've got you covered. We've consolidated all our learnings from three experts you've heard from before and 15 more in the Sprinto Pulse of Saigo GRC 2025 report. It's available for limited time only and you can download from the link in the description in the comment below. Tell us what you think about it and what questions you'd like our experts to answer next.